Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Heard Radio, where we are hanging on and realizing differences. While creating a safe place for Black and queer people. Hey, y'all. Hey, Juan. So, day, we are back. It's we're, We are back. It's another week. It is another day. And we have something very special for y'all today. Yes, we do, Juan. So we have a guest today um, by the name of Mel Keith, y'all. He's a rapper. He does makeup. He is in this game just killing it. So everyone, mm-hmm. welcome Mel Keith. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey. 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 So, um, so how are you? I'm good. I can't complain. If you complain, no one cares anyway. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that's right. So, um, welcome to the show, y'all. Welcome to the show, Mel Keith. Um, Thank you. Back, back story, y'all. Um, I've known Mel Keith probably for about, I would say, about three years now. Yeah, like I, three or four. Three or four years. I met him. We had a mutual friend. I met him through. I think it's the first time I met you was at a party. Mm-hmm. And Mel, Mel Keith came in just. <laughs> this big statuette with this outfit on i was like you know what that's my type of person and ever since then Mel Keith has been really cool and i've just seen i feel like i've just seen him throughout the years you know maneuvered through like the music game and how he moved from our home state to atlanta now and yes so you can go ahead and tell the people you know more what you do um so i've been rapping for two years now i just dropped um uh, well i shouldn't say i just dropped but i dropped um like my first ep this year it's called mel caso um it's like super super dope i wanted to show people like versatility and like i could rap but still like have fun and stuff um and then i've been on a couple of shows out here in atlanta i can't say yet because they haven't aired mm-hmm. um and then like i just I'm starting to do makeup, Melted by Mel Co. Um, I'm coming out with a clothing, well, I rebranded my clothing line. So that'll be dropping soon as well. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. It's so funny because I actually listened to your EP when you dropped it. My favorite song on there is Fuck the Others. That's my favorite one. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite because if, like, I love the song um, Down For My Like, I love that song. So when you remixed it, I said, oh, yeah, he gave he gave us girls what we, what we needed to be given, you know. Okay, yeah. So, um, so we're going to hop into these question ons that we have for you. Okay. So you already told us about yourself and what you do. So, one, how was your move from Detroit to Atlanta? Um, it was it was smooth actually. Like, so I moved May third, but I but in the month of May, I was back and forth. I was back and forth, and then June, that's when I got settled in. So, like, um, I had when I first moved out here, I moved in with my cousin. Um, <clears throat> are y'all ready for the story? Go ahead. Go no, go all the way into it. Okay, no, so, go into it. Go into it. Okay, I am um, because this is my first time ever like opening up and like talking about like this story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had moved in with my cousin. We um, I moved in from like June to the end of July, and the ending of June we got into it. So she was like, "Well, this isn't gonna work. I think you should go back home to Detroit." Um, but I'm gonna let you stay the whole June. And she just kept texting me. She's like, it's so sad because I really wanted you to shine out here and da da da. So I text her, I said, girl, I'm not gonna go home, but I'm just not gonna be here. So I was about to go to a homeless shelter because I was like, I know if I go back to Detroit, it's I'm gonna have to start all over. Like, so I'm like, fuck it. I'm about to just put my little suitcases in storage and go stay at a homeless shelter. But one day I just went over my friend's house and like I was venting to him. But well, he started venting to me and then I was just like, well, shit, let me tell you about my problems. Um, and then he was like, oh, I had told him like, well, shit, I'm about to stay at a fucking homeless shelter for like 90 days and then just see what happens or whatever. And he was like, no, like you can come stay with me. Like you didn't think to ask to stay with me. I don't like putting my problems on people because I'm grown at the end of the day. Like yeah. I'm just, I'd rather just, deal with deal with it yeah um you know so 
um I had stayed with him for three months and then like now I've been in my own place for two months and I'm happy or whatever so yeah that's like been a whole like move and yeah it was a lot but I didn't give up like I'm, I'm proud of you see it's just so funny because I I follow you know we follow each other on Instagram mm -hmm. and I didn't know that like I didn't know that you was going back and forth with your cousin I didn't know that you mm -hmm. was about to go stay in the home like and I think we were talking about that like a couple episodes ago on our podcast about how like social media is for show and how we think we get on social media and we see the people that we close with or even people we don't even know we think they live in this good life or like we all portray this good life on social media but deep down we all going through something in our personal lives exactly that's why so, like even like with celebrities and stuff i just feel like like last night i performed at saucy santana listening party you know mm -hmm. and but i was working <laughs> because it was at the club that i work at so it was like i was his server but i was also you know granted the opportunity to perform there but it's like he's just regular too like shit he in a club drinking sweating like a lot of people have to understand like being a rapper being on social media even if you're just going to a regular job it's st you still have to do your fucking job no matter what you're going through personally so mm -hmm. um uh you can go into an ihop and the server is all happy and joyful but when they leave out that door you don't know what's going on you know so a lot of people be like well they're on social media lying like Everybody, you don't have to put your personal life on social media like you don't have to you know but I'm not I'm not no fake ass bitch so if somebody asks me like I'm not scared to open up about my my story because even with me staying with my friend I was still homeless like you know mm -hmm. but now I'm not so it ain't nothing a, a bitch can say or throw up in my face and that's what a lot of people got to understand too if you real with yourself nothing can phase you like it's one thing being real with others but when you real with yourself like a bitch ain't got no tea on me so i don't care <laughs> I, I, I know that's right so um <laughs> oh go ahead there you can ask the next question go ahead um the next question is how is it being a gay rapper um it's cool it comes with its challenges um because you know they want to compare you to everybody like and stuff like that and I'll even open up about the story last night because it's still so fresh like one of the promoters at the club was not trying to let me perform mm -hmm. because they was like well we think Santana gonna have a problem we think he's he's gonna have a problem and you were supposed to like perform at 12 45 because he got there at one and so we're not we probably not gonna let you perform but the owner of the club was like no like y'all gotta let Mel perform like you know y'all asked him to do it y'all gotta let him perform he was going off but I'm being I'm being I'm just for the sake of the show I'm, you know but he was like uh-uh like y'all got him messed up you know y'all got Mel messed up like Mel work here Mel here every Tuesday night um you know promoting y'all pride nights everything like you know let him do it or whatever so you know they let me do it Santana didn't have no problem like he showed me love and everything posted me um but it's just so crazy because it's like they do be trying to put people against each other because it's like me in the back switching out of my work clothes to go and try to fucking perform and it's like okay y'all ain't gonna let me perform because it's Santana like you know and then in my head I'm thinking like okay this probably Santana telling them this or this probably the whole time it was just them thinking that he was gonna have a problem and he didn't even have a, um, an issue so being a gay rapper is fun um and I think Santana I think Little Nas X Kid Ken Deli Bo because they are knocking down doors and and stuff so it's like y'all can see that we really are real rappers like not every gay rapper want to be like Nicki Minaj not every gay rapper wants to be like you know Santana or the other names that I've named you know but it's been cool it's it's been cool it has its ups and downs but it's been cool you know what that's so crazy because I feel like a lot of times they try to especially with us they always try to pin us as gay black men against each other just because mm -hmm. of the fact of just being gay black men and like i if you like you went to school with other like you know gay black men i didn't because mm -hmm. i was but you probably <laughs> sometimes it probably did feel like somebody like one person it was like somebody got to be brain supreme but it's just like no we are all we can all live in this world happily exactly. and peacefully on one accord like nobody has to be the queen nobody has to be lesser so that i i feel you on that on like always trying to pin somebody but like even they do that with black women in the work in the mm -hmm. workplace so it's just like they always trying to put us against each other because they know that once we come together like i'm telling you like 
if all the gay rappers hopped on an album together, he they know they would eat OTF and them people up. No shade to OTF and Lil Durk and his crew, and I'm just saying, y'all y'all gonna eat them up. So exactly. But the next question would be, um, like, not, like name like two challenges that you face so far. Um, like just in life or I would say wise. you can do life and career wise. Okay, so life, of course, being homeless because it was like I never been in a position like that, and I did. I was just like, oh my god, like I was penny pitching. I was like, I'm being, I'm being just open and honest. Like I was feeling out of stories because I was like, oh my gosh, because I was on this show like a very popular show and like I had to get off of it because I did not want to get vaccinated and it was like well if you're not vaccinated then you can't come back so it was like damn I started going into my savings and then I was just penny pinching stealing from stores and stuff like to make sure that I could eat because I'm like I said I'm fucking grown ain't nobody my friend already giving me a roof over my head like my friend ain't gotta feed me too so um that was like definitely a challenge but I overcame and then career-wise well shit me leaving me not wanting to get vaccinated and me leaving that show because it was it was good paying and I was having fun and stuff but I'm just I've never had COVID thank God for Jesus and I know it's a second strand coming around or whatever but hopefully I don't get it um I don't want it <laughs> but yeah, that was definitely a challenge, like, me working on that show and then, like, being, saying, like, if you don't get vaccinated, you cannot come back. So, so this is, so, like, the show that you was on, are you still, like, contractually obligated not to talk about it? Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. I'll tell y'all, I'll tell y'all off the air, or I can tell y'all, but y'all, y'all will have to cut it out. Yeah, we can't, yeah, like, we can't we blast. call it like the, um, after recording in progress over, we talk yeah. about shit. After- okay. Okay. If, okay. We say, yeah, okay. a lot of times we be like, when after recording in progress is over, then that's when we can get into the nitty gritty. But, yeah. um, so are you on two shows or just one? Um, one, one show, one show. Oh, that was the previous show that you was on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Dad. You can ask the next question. Um, so the next question is, can you tell us like a little bit more about your EP that, that you put out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. So um, basically with the EP Mel Caso, how I got the name um, was I was an English teacher back at home and I will always be wearing like my berets and he'd be like, oh my gosh, like you're an, you're an artist, you're an artist, Mr. Mel, you're an artist. So I'm like, <laughs> I just be like, yep, I am. They be asking me to draw shit. I don't know how to draw. Um, so I'll be like, no, let's color. Like, you know, but uh, <laughs> I do not know how to draw for real. But I'm like, I am an artist because I do rap or whatever. And then I was like, hmm, I'm like Picasso. Like, you know, he like famous for his paintings and stuff. And then I put mail in front of a lot of stuff. So like, um, sometimes I'd be saying like, I moved to Atlanta and made it Mel Atlanta, um, you know, y'all stay in Mel, Michigan, like, uh, Mel Troy, like, I just, Mel like Troy. Mel. okay, like, I just told my friends, like, Mary, Mary Mel Miss, like, you know, I always put Mel in front of stuff, so I was like, I'm like, what about Mel Caso? So, um, my two best friends, um, Brandon and Jaden, we had had a breakfast meeting or whatever. And I was going over the names and he was like, no, nah, Mel Caso is it. Like Mel Caso is it. So like on Mel Caso, I feel like with like the order that I put the songs in, it's like you get the rap, then in the middle you get the fun, like you got the legs to the moon. And I'm, I'm talking about me losing my virginity um, to somebody I was with for three years um, and stuff. And then it's like at the end you get, like time like you know I don't got no time to waste I just told Kai that like I don't have no time to waste like my time is precious you know um but yeah like I feel like Mel Castle is for everybody it's not just for gay people like a, a straight dude can listen to it a straight female can listen to it like it, it's literally a song on there for everybody to you can be like oh my gosh if you take away sexuality you can really be like okay like this some shit I can relate to you know yeah that's why I was like, oh, I loved it. I, I was like, when I was listening to it, I was like, oh yeah, this is it. And I also love your single Hoochie Anthem. I love, okay. I love that. Ho- I love the Hoochie Anthem. I love that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what's a few, what are the projects that you have out so far? 
So Mel Caso is the only project that I have out so far. And then I have some singles like Hoochie Anthem, um, Mean Gossip. Um, and then other projects, I have my documentary. I don't know if y'all watched my documentary before y'all came and interviewed me. Um, oh my God, I didn't know you had a documentary. I gotta uh-huh, go watch yeah. that. I, I did not know you had a documentary. Yep, so part one, I did part one of the documentary was the Making a Mill um, costume and stuff. And then part two is going to be out before the end of this year. Um, and then I can give y'all a little exclusive. Hoochie Anthem will be having a remix um, with the video song. Ooh, ting, 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 ting. Yeah. We love and, a remix. Okay, so... I got some dope artists on there. I just cannot wait for it to be like done with and everything, but that's coming um, soon. And then oh, what other projects? I got music videos and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So that's like pretty much all my projects that's out right now. All right. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, the next question is where do you see yourself in the next four to five years? Um, I just want to say successful, um, whether it's just financial stability or, you know, shit, just successful in what I'm doing, uh, like my career paths and my mom, will, my mom don't even work, but <laughs> to where she doesn't have to work at all, doesn't have to worry about bills or anything. And like, I can just take care of her. Like, that's where I want to be. And maybe, maybe a kid or two, because I want twins, so. I want to be mm-hmm. one of them. <laughs> cause you, cause you have a twin, so. No, I don't. I don't. We, have a twin. People, we are people but always people say think, that. Yeah, people think that we're, that we're twins. I'm, I'm older, but. Ooh, okay, so you, y'all older? How old? Are, how old are you? How older are you than than your brother? Um, two years. Oh my yeah, god! Because I, I don't know why I always just thought y'all was twins. That we was twins, yeah. I'm, and I'm then I remember one time you was like, "We not twins." And you said on Instagram like, "We not twins." And I was like, "Are oh, not twins?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay. I thought they were twins." <laughs> yeah, we used to like back in the day. We used to be like, "Oh, yeah, we twins." Like, or we dress alike and stuff. Sometimes we still do dress alike. But... Yeah, and then I think that's what it is too. Like sometimes y'all be dressing alike. So I like, oh, mm-hmm. the twins, you know. Yeah. No, we could be though. It's possible. <laughs> so how so the next question was um so like the last guest we had on here um my, my hunger nay she worked with the city girls mm-hmm. and she's a dancer so she's not in Atlanta she's a dancer she worked with city girls and quail scrub the ground video and okay. so how was it working with saucy um it was cool like um he was super super nice I probably know who booked her uh, to work on the scrub the ground video um but it was it was super it was cool he was cool like he wasn't like hollywood acting or anything like i i like santana because he is genuinely him like you get what i'm saying like the nails the being ghetto the like all of that like i love it because that's like shit i'm a hood bitch you know people might think like oh my gosh like now so this and so that but no i'm really like a little hood bitch like that like to have fun and just go out and drink and stuff so it was just nice that he was showing me love and wasn't being like stuck up or you know Mm -hmm. like he was better than somebody like i hate people like that but that was not him at all like it was like super super cool so yes yes the next question is, do you have any new projects on the way? Um, yeah, I do. Though, I'm going to drop, um, I can't say too much. I'll tell not y'all when we get off here. Not too much, <laughs> not too much. So, but I do have some projects coming. I do have some projects coming. I have a lot of stuff lined up. I shall say that. That's good. So is there anybody like, like, let's say, like, right now in this moment, is there anybody that you want to collab with? Like, you can name, like, two to three people, like, you really want to collab with. Um, honestly, Sa Baby. I don't know if y'all know who Sa Baby is. I know a lot of people are like, oh. um, he, he is popular for the song Pull Up With A Stick, Let It Hit. But I don't know. Y'all, okay. y'all can find, yeah. Pull Up With A so, Stick. 
Let it hit. Let it hit. Yeah. yeah. He like yeah. super popular for that song, but it's so many other songs that he just like. I'm like, that's one of my favorite rappers. Like, I love him to death. And of course, if I could, Nicki Minaj, duh, that's Queen, and Little Uzi. Purr. Like, I love um Little Uzi. And then I don't know if y'all listen to Hyper Pop, but like, this is somebody I really, really want to collab with. His name is That Kid. I literally love him. I love Hyper Pop. Like so fucking much so familiar but yeah that's that's i gotta look them i that name sounds so familiar that kid sounds so familiar yes like listen to him he did like and when i when i found that kid like when i was listening to the hyper pop it wasn't i was just listening to it i did not know who was um rapping or singing or just anything and then when i had such them up i'm like this is a black boy doing this like you know white music because that's what they say but i'm like oh my fucking gosh like i was really blown away so that's why i'm gonna work with him like because he blew me away so those are like four artists i want to work with i'm like okay that's good all right so um go ahead day i was about to say you can go ahead then i was gonna ask the other one okay so the question was how could you okay not how could you i'm gonna speak now this is where from where we are now because when we on this podcast we speak with a sense of optimism so Mm -hmm. we don't ever be like if or you know we don't we not we not should have could have would have so when you become a big world when renowned rapper what are the Mm -hmm. things that you want to change in the industry um just giving more people opportunity like I feel like a lot of people get on and don't want to, you know, give other people opportunity. Like me, when I do make it, I'm going to like, I'm going to make sure that everybody is okay. And I'm not just saying like paying off everybody bills or what's the name, but like employing people like you know, I'm going to go get a fucking social media manager, but that's like of color, like somebody that's, you know, been doing it, that's been putting that work in. Um, And then just also uplifting other artists, like um, another artist that I love, her name is Trina. We know Trina the baddest bitch. She Mm -hmm. hops on a lot of people um, songs, you know, she definitely do. So I would just, I would do the same thing, like just giving people a cosign, like this mm-hmm. little small thing, just to make people feel like better because it's not easy being an independent artist or just even an upcoming artist in general because you go yeah. perform at these places, they don't know your songs, like so you got to win them over with personality and just deliverance and all of that. So that's what I would do to make the industry better, just employ more people that need it and just give a lot of people the co-sign that they need. Yes. So from where you are now in your career, as far as like what you have done and you're still um, accomplishing, what can you give somebody advice that's younger than you that's trying to, you know, come up in the game or, you know, just trying to be who they want to be? Um, Number one, always be yourself because when you're yourself, you don't really have to make up lies or keep up a lie so that's number one just be yourself because a lot of people just love me and I'm popular because I'm just me like it's not no act it's not none of that um number two never give up when shit get hard please do not give up just talk to God if you are religious if you're not I don't know just but don't give up like don't give up keep going (laughs) Like, talk honestly, to who you believe in. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> talk to who you believe in. Okay, because if you don't believe in God, I don't know, but shit, don't give up, <laughs> like, honestly. But um, that those are my advice. Just be yourself and don't give up and put in the hard work and, and just be genuine and don't be shysty. Do not be shysty, no matter how good a deal is or something, or you got to backstab somebody. Don't be shysty because it's still going to come. It's going to always come back on you. Um, Neely says you never win when you are dirty. Okay. You never yeah. win when you are dirty. <laughs> okay. So, okay. The next question is, do you do you want to sign a record deal? Um, I would if it's right. Like, if I could still, you know, just be myself and not people trying to come in and control me and, and stuff like that because it's like, 
when you're doing so much on your own and people come with a record deal, it's like, you got to come with it because I've been doing this on my own and I've been getting this far on my own. Like, what the hell are you going to bring to the table? Because I'm already the table. So are you bringing another table? Are you just bringing the chairs? Are you bringing a feast? Like, you know, so I would sign a record deal, but it would just have to be on my terms. Like, everything just yeah. still has to be me. I'm not signing no 360s. I'm not. I don't need no ghostwriter. I don't need none of that. Like, because they be trying to do that and, and change you up and stuff. Like, Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people, they say, like, when they when they get these record deals or when they're about to sign, honestly, like, and I'm looking over it or whatever, and I be looking at this stuff, and a lot of times it's money when it comes down to record deals because you, as you know, as being an independent artist, when you shooting music videos, studio time, that's coming out of your pocket. But mm -hmm. when you got these record deals, they're going to pay for your music videos. They're going to pay for your studio time. But it's also other stipulations that come with that, that package. Come with exactly. So I understand where you're coming from because like, too, like with podcasts, and you can sign deals with other podcasts, streaming platforms. I'm not, we're not about to sign no deal with nobody and they want to screw us over. You got to censor this. You can't do this. You can't do that. But, mm -hmm. but we're going we to give y'all money. We're going to make sure everything is set. But it's just like, no, who who wants that? Like when your brand and your authenticity, when your authenticity is being lost because of, mm -hmm. you know, some money or whatever. Exactly. So it's like, never, like, I don't, I'm just too, I think my mom for raising me to have like, I don't give a fuck attitude and just always be yourself and who cares who judge you because it's like with me, y'all cannot bullshit me. Like nobody can bullshit me like ever. So yeah, I don't give a fuck what, I don't care if I was piss poor or fucking broke. Um, I don't give a fuck you. No, like I'm going to still be me. I'm going to be me at the end of the day. So. Okay. You got another, you got, you got to go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Um, I think we're going into topics now. That was okay. okay. All right. So go ahead and today introduce the first topic. Introduce the first topic. Um, we kind of like got off because you know we usually do young and getting it first and then it we showed the okay. We gonna do we gonna do this. We gonna do do introduce young and getting it because I forgot. I we just skipped over that segment. We just hopped right on into the key. <laughs> so basically, young and getting it is where we talk about. Anything that happens during the week that, you know, you just young and getting it, whatever, you know, has just been popping in your life or that's just not been popping, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so you want to We going to go first. I go first and then okay. they going to go and then you can, and you'll know. So my young okay. getting it this week was, how was this week? This week was, the emotion was, <sighs> I'm trying to think from last week, Wednesday. It's been... It's this this shit been moving fast. Like life been moving fast. Like it's just trying to learn how to pick up the ball and move with it. Cause one thing about life, life does not wait for you. It carries on. So I think like the emotion was just like feeling like antsy. But also too, like I told you, Dave, and now you y'all know that as listeners know. Um, I'm unemployed uh, willingly, not, you know, not unwillingly, but willingly mm -hmm. I'm unemployed because I'm moving out of state. I'm moving, I'm in my own apartment. So I just wanted to take a leave of absence before I moved because I didn't want to be moving and then still be working. And then my mind is, my mind don't work like that. I mess around crashing down the corner somewhere because I didn't work myself to death. So mm -hmm. I think this week was really good for me because it was just like, like I got to really digress. Like, I ain't have to wake up at seven or six o'clock in the morning to go to work and make the white man's money. And then it's just like God has really been doing his work because when the last Thursday and Friday, some money popped up in my account, some some heavy chunks of change, but I didn't even know where this even came from. But I, I didn't I didn't question it. I didn't say, what is this? I just took it and I put it right into that savings where all the rest of my yeah. So this week has actually been good. I so that's my young in getting it. Okay. Um, my young and getting it is this week I've been really learning patience. Um, a lot of my friends and you know people around me have been getting acceptance letters, and I'm just you know a little nervous and scared because I only got one so far. Um, one that's not a part of my top three, so I'm trying to be like okay. Uh, they're going to get it, you know, it's the holiday break, so we're just going to wait till January, you know, 
but I'm just, you know, trying to learn patience because this shit is really hard and nerve wracking. Like, if you bitches don't want me in, just tell me no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really over it. But yeah, that's my young again for this week. Okay. Period. You you gonna get it. And if you don't, don't get discouraged, honestly, because it'll be a whole bunch of no's. Um, and then when you get that yes, it's like, okay. It only take one yes. That's what a lot of people got to understand. Like, you don't want a whole bunch of yeses because then now you got to be making the decisions. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, so don't get discouraged, you know, and patience is the key to life. So just sit and wait it out. And God got a plan. That's right. Um, my young and getting it was performing at Saucy Santana's um, album album listening party like it was just it was really fun I went through the fucking trials and the tribulations but it was honestly it was honestly fun and I I enjoyed myself and like um like I just be saying I think God just got me because the way that we get our sections um in the club is our manager she put she write down the section names like on a piece of paper and she shake it up right she shake it up she up, she shake it up. So when I pulled, I was the third to pull. I pulled, and when I opened it up, it said stage. So I'm like, dang, I got the whole stage. Like, and she had told us, like, Santana gonna be on the stage. I'm like, bro, that's God. So when I got stage, all the girls was like, we were hoping that you got stage. Like, we were, we was hoping, like, even if you didn't get it, like, we would have, would have switched it out, like, with you, like, we was hoping you got stage. But I'm like, God just got me, like. But that, that's my young and getting it for the week. Yes, because I when I seen that you were, when you posted, I seen that you was posting that you was um w- like performing at his listen, his I'm listening party. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so great. It's just so funny because I like I said, like with all my friends like that, like we grown, we get we're getting grown. Mm-hmm. And we, we grown, we we grown, but like we, we still we moving through this yeah. life and changes. And I'm seeing y'all like with my homegirl Nate. She worked for Sheen. She did. She did a model for, for Sheen. She was dancing with Sweetie. Now she doing. Um, she was in. Was well, she danced for City Girls? Now she got flew in to L.A. last week because she doing. She got another gig book. And I was when I seen you performing for Sauce, I was like, we. Uh, I'll be starting to say we say ting 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 because we just. I was just like, I, I was just so happy. I'm like, this is really good because it's just like we we young black and we getting it because. Mm-hmm. Literally. We are we are literally our ancestors' dreams, okay? Because okay, literally. So the first topic, well, the, the topic. This is the last thing we're gonna talk about. We're gonna switch gears. The topic we're gonna talk about is dating, okay? Oh and my gosh. <laughs> so the topic we're going to talk about is dating. Now, last week we talked about dating. We talked about like the challenges of dating as a gay black man, uh-huh. and so we kind of talked about how like um being like being not being attracted to openly gay men or being attracted to openly gay men dl culture um mm-hmm. dating men um the type of men that you're attracted to so this week we're going to talk about dating we're going to talk about how we date now and the people that have affected us um okay so a couple weeks ago i see this tiktok of this boy i forgot his name but he, one of the, my favorite TikTokers, Real Progressive, he be talking. He was talking about how we are a mosaic of people in our lives. So, and I was thinking about it, and I sat back and I thought, and I was like, wow. And I was, and you know how a lot of times. Is it Tyreek Ali? No, it wasn't Tyreek Ali. No. It wasn't, uh, wasn't Tyreek Ali. Wasn't. Um, I got to find him. I got to find, I think I, I got to find him. But he was talking about how we are a mosaic of people, of different people that we met in our life, and how literally one person could almost change something in your life. Like Mm -hmm. he said he was dating his he was dating his little white boy and he was obsessed with Ariana Grande. He said something him and him when him and the little white boy broke up, all he listened to was Ariana Grande. He said now he in love with Ariana Grande. He said Ariana Grande my wife like I want to get married to Ariana Grande. And I was sitting there thinking like dang when me and Big X, that's my we so okay, Big X. So Big Big X names here. We have code names. So big X is two people. So we got the first, the first X and then the second X. So we talk, so when we say big X, we kind of they be know which X I'm talking about. But yeah. um I don't think 
Mel Keith, I'm trying to the one I popped out with like two summers ago when I had short hair. He was light skinned. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Don't say too much. You are giving away skin. <laughs> Don't do too much. You have to cut me down. <laughs> yeah, but okay. he was obsessed with Summer Walker. Like he loved Summer Walker. So when me and him broke up, like I fell in love with Summer Walker. And like now I love mm-hmm. Summer. Like I be blasting Summer. And before him, I didn't like Summer Walker. Like I didn't really not. Nah, I'm gonna be real with you. I did not like Summer Walker when I first listened when I for when she first came. Yeah, out. I mean, I'm real, I'm still. I'm I'm not gonna say that I don't like her because I don't know her to like her. But I only like like a song by her, which is Potential. She's talented, but I just, like, this is, uh, and a lot of people would be like, oh, man, like, you know, because they be wanting you to hop on a trend so bad. And I'm not just saying that she mm-hmm. is a trend, but when I, well, I'm going through a breakup right now. But um, when I do go to breakup songs, I'm sorry, I'm not turning on Summer Walker. I'm not turning on SZA. Like, baby, I'm turning on some K. Michelle. I'm turning on some K. <laughs> oh. Like, but for no, real, because K. K. Michelle be talking. Or or if I'm feeling like, I'm going to turn on some Trina. Like, because Trina be talking that shit too. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yes, I'm I- turning on. I was like, I'm going to Fantasia. I'm going to them. I'm not. I, <laughs> like, I don't know. Summer Walker just don't. I don't know. She just don't do it for me, but she does it for other people. And come in grass to her, you know? So, um, so, yeah. So, that's what we're going to talk about is dating and how we are a mosaic of different people in our life. So, <laughs> I want to y'all to both think about two people in y'all lives that y'all have dated, talked to, messed with, whatever, and think about how they have dramatically changed you so i'm gonna give y'all like two minutes to think on these people and how they changed your life i'm about to grab my one <laughs> well child i only got one i don't need to think it's the time or day um let me see i, I don't know ain't nobody dramatically changed me though like maybe. Okay, let's not let's not say dramatically like yeah. little just like I um, little stuff. We can yeah. say little stuff. Okay. So I'm a I go first because I got mine already locked and loaded. And then while I talk, y'all can think. Okay. So the current guy that I talk to now, code name CB Bay. Um he is he's very mature. So a lot of times I notice myself that. When I get up, well, I, I've been doing this for the longest. We've talked about this, but this is stemmed from childhood trauma. I'm in therapy. I'm working on it. Well, y'all scouts, don't worry about me. So a lot of the times I talk about how when I get upset, I turn into Candace Dillard Bassett Jr. And I just go there. Like I go, I, because like I, like I was telling Day and the last like a couple episodes ago, I was talking about how growing up, I grew up with my dad. He remarried and he had other children. So mm-hmm. then I had step siblings. So my step siblings, they would then try to play with me. Mm-hmm. And so I had to show them who was top dog. And I had to show them that this tongue is like a snake and it's going to bite mm-hmm. you. You're not going to like it. So mm-hmm. I carried that tendency from childhood into my adulthood, to young adulthood. And, and it does, and it, it, it don't help. And a lot of times, um, people do start with me because I don't never just go out of my way just trying to start with people. But like when people start with me, like we was talking about a couple episodes ago on Thanksgiving, somebody tried me at Thanksgiving and I ripped them a new one and I had the whole house in shambles. And Mm -hmm. so (laughs) I think um, it was, I was already like that. But when I started dating Big X, the first one, we had a very volatile relationship. Okay. So we used to go below the belt, like, and I think what we what we used to do is it was always a game of like I'm a, I'm gonna hurt you, I'm gonna hit you first before you hit me. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, like when I be talking to CV Band, when me and him get into it, we don't get into arguments, like we don't argue because he don't like to argue, like we have conversations. So, but when we kind of get a little heated, I just like dish out an insult and I just take it there. And he'd be like, whoa, 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 like that ain't, that's not, that's not called for. Like you could have left that at home. So I think that's something I carry on with me. And like, it just heightened it with, um, with time. So it was just like childhood trauma mixed with that. And then how mm-hmm. me and him was like n- n- horrible for each other. We was just not good. 
and how that mixed up together. And it's just like, now this is why I act the way I act in like personal life, family, platonic relationships, romantic relationships, and it don't help. So that would be like my first one is like going there. Um, the second one is that when I like someone, I take my time to get to know them. Mm-hmm. Um, I never want to be in a relationship or talking to somebody or whatever you want to call it. And I feel like I'm taking, 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 and I'm not giving nothing to you because I've been in situations where I, where somebody has just took, 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 took from me. And I'm like, dang, like, wait, you're not going to pour the same thing you just took from me back into me. Like, you're not going to restore me. You're not going to help me. So I think that when I pay attention to those things, I subconsciously kind of do the things that I pay attention to. And I kind of like take on a things and I listen and I observe. I'm very observant. And one thing about me, I write stuff down too. So once I notice it, I write it down. Like they know each, every guy I have talked to, like seriously, in my phone, I got a notes with their name. And I have like, in this log of like things they don't mm-hmm. like, things that like weaknesses, strengths. And like, I got paragraphs when I was mad, upset, angry, sad. So like, I think I take when 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 I'm I take things from them and I basically kind of put them into myself. So mm-hmm. yeah, so those are my two. Okay. You want to go or I can go? Uh, you can go. Okay. You supposed um, to go. Who me? Share. I was being no no no. <laughs> they supposed to go. They supposed <laughs> to go. Oh, See, they don't like to, they don't like to be put on the spot. They be liking to go last. So whenever I do stuff in here, I go first because I know they be like. I don't want to go first. No, like, I you know, like I just be trying to think because you know, like I said last episode, my life is like a mystery box. You will not be able to solve it. So, like I'm just sitting here trying to word certain things because you know, last episode, some people told me like, "Damn, you really confused me, bitch." Well, you just confused it. Yeah, because you told the, you told the <laughs> niggas you said I like niggas with kids, and then you said if the kids over five, don't bring them over here. To like, which one is oh. it? You want this, you want the nigga with kids, or you don't want the nigga with kids? <laughs> See, yeah, so like don't try to figure me out. But um I think other than the relationship I'm in now, quotation marks, because that nigga in a relationship, not me. Big, the big last papa. one. <laughs> Girl, that is not his name. <laughs> That's his well, no, his nickname. We first started out with Mr. Cuff on, but when we found <laughs> out what he packing in, in the in the bank account. And in the age, I said, oh, that's big pop on. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so my first real relationship that me and him actually came out together publicly. And I think this is kind of why I like the people that I like, because once we were dating, but we were undercover dating. So I think our, to me, our relationship was better when nobody knew about it, Mm -hmm. us, because once we came out together, I think I came out first. And then I think like a week or two later, he came out. So after I came, after he came out, child, he became the motherfucking top of the motherfucking school, bitch. And I know y'all know about the niggas who think they all that and then all the little sugar foots coming running after him after they know who he mm-hmm. is but that wasn't the deal breaker for me the deal breaker for me was getting somebody pregnant while we were together so that's why when people ask me well why don't you date or why don't you talk to openly gay men well when I did the person who I thought I was in love with got a bitch pregnant Mm-hmm. So I would rather for him to get her pregnant while we were undercover, because then it'd be like, okay, it's not, it's gonna waste me time of uh, people. The uh, embarrassment, first of all, too bitch, you playing with my motherfucking heart. You said you wanted to be with me, but you out with this bitch. It was just saved me a lot. So like, you know, like, like the people who I like because. The niggas who, to me, the niggas who are undercover know what they want. That's all you're going to get from them. And you know what to expect from them. But when a nigga who's openly gay or whatever, and you only supposed to, well, to me, like, niggas still ain't shit whether they gay, straight, or whatever. But Mm -hmm. with him doing that whole having a baby and being, like, just fucking around, that shit just blew my fucking mind. Like, I was sick, literally sick after that shit. I just could not take that shit. No, I feel you. It's, it's a lot. It's it's like dang, like you just 
we just did all of this for what you know yeah like we could have literally stayed where we was at for you to do all this shit and don't get me wrong like i knew like he still liked the girls more than guys or whatever but for us to do this whole like have that long i'm telling y'all we had like a three-day long ass conversation about like mm-hmm. the whole process what we gonna do and after we come out we you know we're gonna be the baddest couple or whatever wooty wooty woo and then it didn't even last a fucking month of us being who we was for you to go buck around crazy. So that day, I never knew that. <laughs> I never. So I see why you said what you said last episode about like you be trying to like you tend to steer clear of like the openly gay man. I I see why. That's you know that's dramatic, right? That's a dramatic change. <laughs> <laughs> dramatic change. He said, hey, but you don't want a DL boy neither. Like I like I, well, I mean, I know I don't. I don't, I'm not nobody's secret, you know, but it's it's different from being like private and being a secret. So see, I, I never are you okay with being never, a secret? I never got like secret vibes, never because um his cousins knew before, like, we all came back, before we mm-hmm. came back. Some of his close family members knew, of course, you know, close friends, best friend, and woo woo and same by, vice versa. So when I'm dealing with who I'm dealing with now, I never get, like, oh, it's a secret type vibe because they they know and, like, the people around them kind of know, but they don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's like, not the ahead. public knowing. Not the public knowing. Yeah, and that's I'm a private person. I don't like people my business, bitch. Because mm-hmm. people in your business, they tend to like tiptoe too much, and then that's when you have the backhand of hoe on her mouth. That's mm-hmm. what I, like, you know, yeah. I definitely I get where you're coming from because like I was in a relationship with yeah for three years, and don't nobody know who I was with. Well, I mean, if you do the math and if you are smart, then you will know. But is it? The, I think I know. Yeah, you know. We, I know. Okay, I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say. Yeah, you so, definitely know. Yeah, yeah I just Okay, so. Yeah. How was that? What? So I. I want to ask two. I want to ask. I want to ask, ask a broad question, not like a. Yeah. So how was that breakup for you? Because three years is a long time. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, well, what what I can say is, you know, this is not my first breakup. Um, but I haven't like I haven't cried. I haven't none of like literally. Um even when I do go through breakups, I really don't cry. It was one breakup that I was crying. I cried for a day. I looked at myself. I cried for a day. I said, okay, I'll get one day Damn, to cry. I got to be like call, you. If they don't call me within that day, then they don't care. So what, what are you crying for? So I looked at myself in the mirror and I was crying. And I was like, bitch, you look a fucking mess. Like, that's what I literally said to myself. And I started laughing at myself. Like, you really crying over somebody? Like, nobody got control of your emotions. Like, you need to get it together, you know? I'm going to start telling myself that. Because I'm a cry, baby. I cry. I, I cry. Yeah, I have I cry, cried, I, I cry about something um, <laughs> every damn day. I just what's the name? Like, I guess I can say my dramatic change was that like not crying and then just throwing myself into work because it's like, okay, now I gotta boss up on this nigga. Now I gotta show him like, you know, like that that's how it is for me. So it's like it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because it's like I guess I'm suppressing my feelings, but I'm getting my feelings out by just working, by being around other people, you know. Um I've been broken up for two months now. Well, yeah, two months, two what was last month? No, it's been a month. Oh, about to go on two months. But um, you know, I have dated, I have like went on like little dates and stuff but it's just like i'm not dating like for nothing serious like you can tell a guy i'm just dating for experience like because i don't have a lot of experience within Mm -hmm. dating like just dating around and and stuff like that and it's okay to explore your options and you know and it's okay to talk to multiple people as long as you're not stringing nobody along or you know when to cut everybody off then you will be okay like so just multiple people does not make you a hoe it don't even make you a hoochie because i'm a hoochie but it doesn't even it doesn't make you a hoe or nothing like people need to understand a hoe is somebody that's being paid for sex these bitches fucking for free that's not no hoe 
Because <laughs> a hoe gonna get their money. So I don't know what that is. That's a dummy, if you ask me. But, um, you know, as long as you're not, you know, in around and doing it, even if you are fucking around, just make sure that it's safely. Because who cares? Like, we're grown. People are horny, you know? But I've been celibate right. since July. That was the last time, like, I had sex because... I was just going through my depression and, and stuff like that. And that was like, well, well his cause of leaving was my um, depression was negative uh, towards him and stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay, fine. Like, you know, I'm still going through depression like right now, you know, and it has messed with my confidence. It has done a lot of things, but it's like, it's still not going to stop me from being like, what the fuck I got to be? Because at the end of the day, I got to wake up and it's reality. Like, bitch, bills still got to get paid. Bitch, you still got to eat. Bitch, you still got a motherfucking dream that you're chasing. Like, you know, so um, with you just saying that you in therapy, it just makes me want to go talk to a therapist, you know? Cause yeah, just- we advocate for therapy on this podcast because I'm telling you, like, it's something about with your therapist, like, you can tell her anything. Like I, we heard my my therapist name is Natasha, but we call her what we call her day. Tashi Poo. I call her <laughs> Tashi Poo, and it's just like I could tell her anything, and like you know, like because when you tell your friends certain stuff, you tell them certain stuff that you want to know, and mm-hmm. then you leave out details. No, Natasha, you tell I tell Tashi Poo everything. Like yeah, uh huh, because I lied about this, and then I did this, and this is why I did mm-hmm. that, and, I, and it's just like, and it's like no judgment, like. She don't be judging. Yeah. They here to help you. They here to like, okay, so you lied about this, so this is why you did this, and boom, boom, this is what you do to fix it, boom, boom, boom. And it's just like, well, mm-hmm. my therapist, I'm so thankful, is that like, she quick on her toes. So I can say one thing, I rant for like 30 minutes straight, and then she be like, okay, you said boom, 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 and then this is a direct cause of boom, 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 so this is what you need to do when you do boom, 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 and this is the step you need to do. And she be like, go ahead, do it next week on a session, let me know how I go. And I'd be like, Tasha, yeah. you, you did that. So, okay. um, so I'd be like, and it's so funny because I'd be telling people anytime I'm like, they want a therapist, I'd, I'd, I'd link you with my therapist, but Tasha be booked. I ain't got no appointment until two weeks from now. I used, I'd be seeing her every week and I'd be getting in. It's like, she like a celebrity, so a celebrity therapist or something like <laughs> I'd be trying to get in with her. I can never get in with her. I'd be having to book my shit in, in advance. So I'd be telling mm-hmm. people like, I love her, but I will. I also tell you to go to like betterhealth.com. Mm-hmm. Um, that's strictly online. But if you want to like, because she's here in Michigan, so I can go in and see her, or I could be on a computer and see her. Mm-hmm. Um, I found her on Psychology Today. Psychology Today, you could pick. I put black. Um, I put black Christian and LGBTQIA friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just went from that list there, and I found her, and it sent a little description. But um, yeah, so we I say you want to go talk to somebody, go talk to somebody, use your insurance, boom, do it. Also, mm-hmm. I was gonna say, so you said the cause of the the, the cause of the breakup was depression. Uh mm-hmm. that was the question I was on thinking. his end. <laughs> on his on his so what did you think? What was your end? What was you thinking? Um, I shit, I was thinking like uh, because I was engaged, so I was thinking like, damn, like well, wait, what y'all about? was engaged. Mm-hmm. Huh, well, okay, that's my. Other- so you said y'all was together for three years, right? Yeah, got engaged. So, in- so y'all were were y'all secret or private? Um, private. It wasn't no secret. It was just private. Okay. I was gonna say because I'm like it's been a couple times that y'all and like took some pics together. Uh huh. But, but I mean, <laughs> but but I think but we knew though like we knew yeah we, like the people that's close to me is going to know like the people that know me is going to know but it's just like I could just be doing some like I'm a rapper I could have anybody like I'm gonna take a picture with anybody and then they'd be like oh okay I like, like even my friend Beyonce they they thought that me and him was dating and I'm like no like, this is just my friend like you so know but, hmm yeah. Wait, what, wait, what did you say? Say it again. I said he proposed to you. Uh-huh, yeah. It wasn't That's... like... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like... Fly. It wasn't like... I'm going to tell y'all when we get off air how, how everything went. But yeah. All right. Um, but I feel like on my end, I'm like, damn, okay, like, because if the, I'm like, I'm thinking like, okay, if the shoe on the other foot, like, I would have been there. I'm thinking that it's, it's going to be the same, like, for me, you know, like, okay, like, you know, like, I got you, but it was just tough love. It was just, it really wasn't, like, 
no sympathy, no like, okay, like let me hug you, let me hold you, let me, you know, it re- it wasn't none of that. So it's so crazy because uh, it's so crazy because like he wasn't meant for you anyway. Because when you get married, when you get married under the law and before God, you say for better or for worse. Okay. So the fact that you dip out on the worse, and this not no, this not this is not a bad worse because a lot of y'all be thinking when they say for better or for worse, y'all be thinking cheating. No, you can get divorced. You somebody will cheat on you, and you get divorced. It's in the Bible. You can get divorced if a man cheat on you. It's in the Bible. You can. But like for worse, it's just like if you're going through mental stuff, you're going through yes. depression, like that. You need to be there, like for better or for worse. But you want to dip okay. out because I'm going through something mentally that you can't control. Okay. And I think people don't so, understand that with mental health. It's like, I can't control this. Like, I can't no, control what like you wake up, Like, you wake up, you don't have control of your emotions. Some, some days you wake up happy as hell. Some, some days you wake up just pissed at the world. Like, this morning I woke up and I was just pissed. And it's like, I just had this amazing night last night. You get what I'm saying? And I woke up this morning and I was pissed. They don't even know what I'm pissed about. And then, like, I went to Walmart and I started shopping and I got happy. Like, so... It's like, it's just, your emotions just be all over the place and you just never know what nobody going through. So like, that's why I just be trying to be kind to everybody that I, uh, what's the name, but shit, it doesn't, me, like, I'm, I always tell people I'm never going to change my character as much as it did hurt me that somebody that I was like, that, that I freaking loved so much like, let me, because of that, I'm still not going to change my character because you can be changing your character. I hate when people like, okay, say you do something for somebody and then like you ask somebody to do something for you and they be like, no, well, no, well, this. And then you be all mad, like, well, I ain't doing shit for nobody else. And I'm not, I hate when people do that. Just because somebody told you no, still do for other people because God is going to bless you. You can be blocking your blessings by, by saying no to somebody else because somebody else said no to you. Or like, I don't know. I'm just never going to change my character. I don't care how much somebody motherfucking hurt me. I'm not going to change my character. I'm not going, I'm not doing that. I'm not turning into no negative Nancy or nothing like that. That's all I was saying. Like people, I ain't nobody really uh dramatically changed me because it's like I always go into every relationship with that mindset and a lot of people gotta understand you have to still love on yourself and be yourself outside of a uh, outside of a relationship because I'm the type of bitch I don't want to go everywhere you and your friends go I don't even want to be friends with your friends because they're really ops because they're gonna let you go and do whatever you the, you want to do and not tell you nothing and sit and smile on your face. And sometimes you got to be careful with the mamas too. Um, but it's shit. You met his mama? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You meet the whole people. You was there around three years ago. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, but I'm not talking, I'm not talking about her. I love her nearly and dearly, like uh-huh. nearly and dearly. But, um, but yeah, so it's just like, you just have to still be you. You know, I'm the type of bitch. Go out, babe. Go have fun. Be safe. Shit, tell your hoes to be safer. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's this one little guy that I kind of like or whatever. Um, oh. Like, I like him. But, you know, he's been going through stuff in his life. So it's like, I kind of just, you know, he going through stuff. I'm going through stuff. Like, I kind of want to, like, get over my depression, just get my confidence back a little bit more. And, um, you know, and then take things there. But. You yeah, know, that's just, right now I'm just dating for experience, dating for the fun of it. Um, yeah. And yeah, like that, that's just, that's my whole take on dating. Oh, I got one more take on dating and I smile at My take on dating is, guys, it is okay for, and I'm going to say it like this first, it's okay for a bottom <laughs> to treat a top and it's okay for a top to, you know, to treat your bottom. Of course, like, these these a lot of a, a lot of these like, what you mean tree you mean like gifts yeah, or like like, pay, like gifts you know flowers like oh, okay I, well i'm mean, human in another way sometimes i like to make my nigga feel like my bitch like yeah nigga. of course you know like, yeah you know what i'm saying yeah like, like you know I, eat off his plate on the first date to establish dominance yeah like, like i like to like you know like let me you know like let me trick off on you a little bit like let me show you because like with the dude that I was with, it was like, I was, you know, 
like buying stuff and doing stuff and he wasn't used to that because it's like okay you got a name you you know you used to leeching ass bitches but it's like you got with a boss like mm-hmm. you with a boss now i don't gotta you know you you don't gotta do nothing you don't gotta worry about nothing like i'm gonna boss you up i'm gonna make sure that we we both good you know and even um like the little date that i went on um it was nice it was a picnic day it was like so it was like super super nice and um you know, he was like, I just never had nobody buy me flowers. And I never, you know, like, I'm like, well, this, like, get used to it. Like, if you don't want <laughs> me get fucking used to it, because used to you're it. Not, never, nobody broke or like, I, like I said, with, with the record labels and all of that, like, I am the table, baby. So you, you, you know, you, when you're fucking with a table, bring something to it. The silverware, the cups, the, the whole fucking nine. You get what I'm saying? So that's my thing on dating like tops be open to your bottoms you know treating you and bottoms be open to treating tops like y'all can pay for dates and shit too like that's me I, yeah, I my love language like one of my love languages is get, like giving giving and getting gifts like i love to mm-hmm. give and get a gift. so it's just like uh when i was like big x the first big x like he wasn't used to that either he was used to people you know leeching off of him Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, no, nah, like, if we go somewhere, and then, like, two, like, me, like, if I ask you out, like, hey, you want to do this, I'm almost like you pay. And then, like, two, exactly. like, when I, when I go out with my friends, like, they and I, like, when we went to the for my birthday, like, one night, I pay. One night, somebody else pay. One night, they, like, mm-hmm. we all, so it's just, like, I don't never... I, and I also, too, I don't like when people throw stuff up in my face either. It's just like, and then I you ain't gonna read. I hate that with a passion. That just happens to me. I can't wait. So, what we say, who the fuck of the week or whoever. I <laughs> the boat of the week. story because I'm ready for that. So, but, yeah. But no, I, I hate that as well. And then it's just like, you know, to go back to my breakup, I I I did that to my ex. Like I did that. Like I would I had came home drunk. I'm gonna tell y'all the whole story. Like once we get off air, it's so embarrassing. But I'll tell y'all like this was the I had came home like like I was drunk and like was mad and I just got to throwing up the things that I did for him, you know, or whatever. And then like I didn't remember the night. Like I did not remember the night because that's how drunk I was. Um, and then like the next day when he was telling me and I was just like, damn, like I said that like. Yeah. What like, what you what you did you throw up like materialistic things or maybe I threw up everything. <laughs> sometimes okay, I think sometimes and I did not mean to do that, but it's just I like didn't mean to do it cuz I think it's sometimes people deserve it to be some people cuz some people are leeches. So it's mm-hmm. just like after all all the things I have done for you, it's like you're going to go ahead and do this. Now it's different if it's mutual, but but I don't know. Like, because now seeing the way this, your situation is, I, I, I'm glad you threw up everything you, you did. Okay. Because I'm telling you, I, I'm the belly of the ball when it comes to clap back. I just be like, and like my cousin, my cousin and my, my brother, that's who I was, before I had came onto the podcast, that's who I was, um, I was mm-hmm. talking to them. And they was like, well, what you going to be talking about? What you? I said, I don't know. I don't, I honestly don't know. I'm like, my friend asked me to come on. Like, I don't know. And they was, uh, but we was talking about my ex or whatever. And they would just always be telling me like, I'm just so proud of you. I'm proud that you finally like stood up for yourself and like you did what you did. But I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I wish I didn't because that's not me. But in a sense, like I'm, I'm happy that I did you know oh, yeah because I think a lot of times it's hard to walk away from a situation where you know mm-hmm. it's not benefiting you but it's like you got that much love in your heart for this person yes yeah. it, it and it's like I just like, I see something broke I just want to heal it like oh man. you got that tendency you got that yes. you want to fix it like I, I want to fix it and like I be wanting to fix everybody's problems so I don't have to deal with my fucking own <laughs> So that's okay, yeah. You go because when you go, when you go to people, they ain't gonna tell you that you like to take on other people's emotional baggage. I forgot what the syndrome is called, like because you like to heal other people because you don't want to be you don't feel like dealing with your stuff. So you're like, I better just go heal other people and make other people feel good. Exactly. But um, so would you call yourself a people pleaser? Um, I don't know because what is you? I don't know. Elaborate on people pleasing because I'm just ain't pleasing on any and everybody. <laughs> not everybody but like people you oh, okay well people i love i'm gonna make sure that they're okay 
you know, like I am. I'm gonna. Act, you need something. You okay? Um, okay. I would say a people please. An example of people please would be like, let's say, like you was talking to a dude, right? It's a good mm-hmm. example. You talking to a dude. You just got off from work. You worked like a twelve hour shift. You tired. You want to go to bed. He texted you and says, "I want to come see you. Can I please come see you? Can I like? Can I like?" He's asking, "Like, can I please come see you? Can I mm-hmm. please come see you?" And you kind of like, eh, "Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just got off work. I'm tired." And he like, "But I really want to come see you. Can I come see you? Can I please come see you?" Blah, blah, blah. And then you just finally give in mm-hmm. and do it because of the fact that like he really want to see you. That'd be an example um, of people pleasing. Well, if it's a nigga that I like, <laughs> but that's different too. Like, because if this nigga that yeah, you like, you're going not, to always see. Ain't, ain't no, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Ain't no random nigga just coming over here to motherfucking lay up because I pay my own goddamn bills. So you ain't just about to be coming over here to lay up. But if it's a little nigga I like, yeah, but you're gonna get you. I'm going to sleep on you. So shit, are you gonna see? You want to see me? You gonna see me goddamn sleep because I'm goddamn tired. And if you don't want me tired and you don't want me working, then take on a bill so I don't have to work a 12 hour shift. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, okay, yeah. So it's not more. So I'm not pleasing. like a people pleaser. Like, okay. everybody just can't run over, over on me and, and shit. Like, I know when to be like, okay, like, okay. I do like helping people. I do like, like, even when I moved out here, um, it was my homegirl. I was trying, well, we ain't we ain't cool no more, but her beef is her is on her because I don't got no beef for nobody. But um, you know, I seen that she was a single mom, she really couldn't afford her baby to go to school. So I'm like, all right, girl, I I um, you know, I'll watch your baby for you. So I was watching her baby for her, and you know, that was just another place to lay my head while I was homeless. So I'd be back and forth from her house to my other friend's house. And I'm like, um, you know, I was watching her baby for her and stuff. And then it came on to the point to where um she had me watching her other friend, uh, baby, which became my friend. But then they started what like it was like one time I couldn't watch her friend, baby. Her friend had caught an attitude with me. And I had told her, I said, girl, look, I value my relationships and I like the nip the nip stuff in the bud like real easy, you know. So I'm just not gonna watch your baby no more. Because was, that, was she paying you? No, they I was just do I was do I was doing it free willingly so they can go to work and go make some money. You get what I'm saying? That's how good of a person I am. So I'm like, it was easy for me to nip it in the bud for her because it's like you really, the friend really not doing nothing. My friend was letting me like lay my head there or whatever, you know. Sometimes when I just wanted to give my friend his a long time. So it's like, I'm like, okay. But then one night I had um one night I had went out and she thought that I was going to be back like all early. Like, girl, what if I was never coming the fuck back to your house? You know, and mm-hmm. um, she was like, uh, she was like, okay, well, I'm going to lock Ava in the house so you can just go to your other friend house or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, like, okay, that's cool. Girl, I didn't get to my, I got to my friend house at like seven in the morning because when I be outside, I'd be outside. So it was like seven, eight in the morning. When I got there, my friend was woke. So we was just talking. I look up, I'm like, damn, we didn't talk. It's one, it's one in the afternoon and I ain't been asleep. So I went to sleep. I guess she went to work at like six or something, but I'm asleep. I woke up at like eight. I'm like, oh, snap, girl. Like, I didn't even see that she was calling me, you know, yada, yada, yada. So she had an attitude. So I'm like, well, girl, I'm just going to come get my little uh, bag that I had left over there. And I'm just, we're going to talk. And like, I had talked to her. I'm like, I don't want to watch the baby no more. Like, because I don't even want to, like, I don't want people feeling like I'm letting them down or like you obligated or, or just anything. Because, baby, I'm doing you a favor. You know, you able to go work. Baby, I'm not working. You get what I'm saying? I'm not, not like, y'all knew, they knew I just had stopped being at, at, on that show. Like, so it's like, I'm not working, I'm not doing nothing, but you're not even trying to be like, okay, Mel, you, shit, here go $5 to give, but it's okay, but I'm doing better than all of them, so. <laughs> because they know, I don't, they, I don't like kids. So I, love <laughs> kids. I love kids. I love kids. If it was I'm, on fire. I love kids. I've been a nanny since I was in like ninth grade. But. Oh my, oh, so you like kids. Oh. Yeah, I like kids. I, I like kids. Shit, kids worse than adults, but I like them though because they real. I'll tell you if something look a mess or something. I remember one time, <laughs> one time one of my babies I was nanny and I had some uh, I had some brown 
uh, lipstick on. I just thought I was so, they, they was like, mm -mm, change that. You already got on dark colors. You already wearing dark colors. You don't need to wear the brown. I said, oh. Yeah. Okay. I think they're going to color palette. I love that. Okay. I changed it. I changed it. I said, okay. All right. But, yeah. So. But, y'all, okay. So, we're going to get into the, go ahead, the last segment of the show, Dang. Get into <laughs> it. What is, child? It's, um, what I heard on the curb. Oh, what's, like, okay. What, what's the, what are, what are our words on the curb? What is the word on the curb? Let me go to the DM. So just explain. Word on the curb is when some hot exclusive tea just drop. And usually in the media, it takes things about three to four business days, three to four days for it to really hit and really hit. Because like uh -huh. what we did was they need to cut our check. So we talked about the Danny Leah and the, the baby situation before it really got crazy. And I was like, crazy. you know what? Yeah. Everybody run us a check. I need to check from Shade Room, Neighborhood Talk. I need to check. I need to when check. When I tell y'all, oh my God, when we get off this recording and I tell y'all some, some tea that I had already was knowing, and I'm like, damn, I don't even want to say nothing. We had <laughs> already, we was already predicted it. We had already said it, and then boom, it happened. I said, yeah, we need to mm -hmm. check. So what are our word on the curbs, then? Well, actually, this word on the curve this week has two parts. One is, well, they're both about Tristan Thompson. One, there's a alleged another baby mom who's coming to the light. Wait, so remember last week we said it was another woman that came out. So it's another woman? Yeah, so I think what that brings up to like three or four. Three, we had three women now because it was the first baby mama that came out, the trainer. Then it was another one. And then now you said it's another one. So it's three babies. Yeah. Allegedly, we always say allegedly because y'all don't tell us who was and get no check over here. <laughs> and <laughs> the part two is that Chloe she banned him from the Christmas events at the Kardashians' house this year. But word on the curb is they got footage of him actually being there. So she's portraying to us like, yeah, she's done with it, but babe, we all know, girl. <laughs> and like we said last week, and everybody is saying the reason why Chloe. Is taking this mess from him because she know he a deadbeat daddy. A lot of y'all don't know that Tristan has a, a whole son. A lot of people don't know that. Because that's older than that's but older. I is I don't even really care for the Kardashians. I mean, they are great businessmen. Don't get me wrong. I don't really care for them. Um, so I don't be like following their stories or whatever. But I know, like. Chloe then, then took a couple of people, men or back back door a few people. So it's just like karma. Karma is just out to get you. So that's why you're doing all of this because you don't want to 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 feel embarrassed or or maybe if I don't I honestly don't know. But like I said, you do some grimy shit, it's gonna come back. So don't be being grimy. Like at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 the word on the curb for the people. Mm -hmm. Yes, child. Okay, you ready? Get it together. That's all. Get it together. That's it. Like, take care of your kids. Not financially, it. but mentally, it. emotionally. At the end of the day, when kids are involved, don't shit us matter. Don't don't Chloe. Don't none of the mamas that's coming forward. Don't the the kids. That's all that. That's all that matters. At the end of the day, once kids are involved, that's all that matters because kids are innocent. You grown ass motherfuckers knew what the fuck y'all was doing. What the fuck was going on. And mm -hmm. yeah, like at the end of the day, y'all knew what game y'all was playing. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck how the media try to flip it or whatever. Y'all knew what was going on. Going on. Maybe the Kardashians, they be knowing. Okay. Uh, y'all definitely know. Y'all definitely, y'all definitely fucking know. I think about her mama. Bro, Chris is a great like, business woman too. Great. I want her ass to be my motherfucking manager. <laughs> she took that I sex tape and made them all do it. Ever was my man. oh bitch, I'm out of there. Stop playing. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I just feel like Tristan just needs to focus on the kids. They need to focus on the kids, not really focus on Tristan. It's not really, he's a nobody. Like I don't I didn't even know who the fuck he was until this whole debacle transpired some years ago. So yep. it's like he's a fucking nobody. He's not even that cute. With them bags under his eyes. So basketball, yeah. he needs to be basketballing. Yeah, that's what he needs to be playing. He needs to be focusing on kids, and it'll be okay. Like y'all, that ain't nobody to fucking fight over. He's not even all of that. Like he's, I'm not gonna say like he ugly or anything, 
I might have just called him ugly a minute ago, but that's because of his spirit, whatever. Yeah, is. the spirit is ugly. That's what makes him ugly. Like that, it doesn't make me look at you like, oh my god, you're so fine. But he's a nice looking guy, but just basic looking. Like a it's a whole bunch of other niggas that look like him. If y'all want to go argue over somebody, like, but yeah, that's my take on the word on the goddamn curve. That's my advice to them. Worry about them kids and worry about yourself and boss up on Tristan and shit. The mamas don't need to be arguing. Y'all got kids, they siblings. Let them kids see they fucking siblings. That's that. Yes. Okay, Day. <clears throat> you ready, Day? Yes, I am. Can I get a B? A B, you get your B, you get your B. Can I get a U? You, yeah, you, yeah, you. Can I get an M? Mmm. Mm-hmm. Bum of the week. Yeah. Broke, ugly, and miserable. So this bum is the segment, of the bum of the week. So this is, we, we we nominate somebody. Welcome to bum of the week court. Welcome to the courthouse. I am Judge Kyra Morgan. We have Judge, we have Judge Day, and we have Judge Mel Keith here. And we are here to sentence y'all today. So you have displayed each characteristic of broke, ugly, and miserable. So... I know you got your bum. Go ahead, Mel. Okay, so you got your bum. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh, I've been waiting to tell this story. But okay, I I don't. What can we call him? We gonna call him light skin. Okay. We just gonna call him light skin because I don't want to. I don't even wanna. But okay, so light skin was basically supposed to be my backup dancer for last night um, at my performance or whatever. So, I thank Light Skin for making my mix. Um, and, you know, like, I guess he had a bad knee or whatever. But my thing is, I don't know when you need bad or when you need good because you're being your close friends dancing on it. And, you know, so I'm like, I'm like, well, can you just please dance? Because I already had one dancer, which was my friend Hector. I'm like, come on. I'm like, ooh, I, I didn't say the name, but um, Hector. So like, that's your friend, I'm, so you good. Yeah, you that's good. my friend. But yeah. I don't be trying to say people's names no fucking way. Yeah, yeah. But, you yeah. so, know, um, my friend, I'm like, like, you know, so I'm like, can you just please do it? Can you just please do it? At first, he kept telling me no. But then I was like, come on, like, please. Like, I'll make sure that you get to the club. I'll make sure that you get some drinks. Like, please, because, like, a lot of people don't, don't know. Um, when I moved out here and I was performing, I was performing at all straight clubs, like, all straight bars. Like, so I'm like, this is my first gay performance. It's in one of the biggest, like, LGBTQ plus artists like I'm like come on and then plus I'm trying to put you on too because it's like he gonna see you dancing you're a fucking TikToker like a lot of people don't like these songs and stuff be going viral because they be paying these TikTokers to do dances to make the the song so I'm like a lot of people don't know that that's how that's how people are pushing singles now you know but um but yeah, so I'm like, so we, he was like, okay, yeah, like I'm gonna do it, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, bet. So I had went to the mall the day before my performance and I'm like, um, I'm, I'm texting in the group chat. I'm like, well, okay. I'm like, do y'all wear crop tops? Because I was still trying to figure out my outfit. I knew my bottoms, but I did not know my top. So I'm like, um, I'm like, y'all wear, y'all wear crop tops. And then, um, my friend was like, I wear a crop top for you. Light skin was like, no, I don't. I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to buy some plain white shirts. Y'all wear, y'all wear, um, jeans. And then I'll buy some Santa hats or whatever. So then my friend was like, no, that ain't going to work because I don't even go with your whole hoochie aesthetic, yada, yada, yada. I'm I'm trying to be on some, you know, like some quick, Fast up. So I was like, okay, well, y'all think of a y'all think of some bottoms, and then I'm just gonna start looking for red tops and sending y'all a whole bunch of pictures of the red tops. Now the mall closed in an hour. I'm trying to find their fucking outfit before I have, I find my top. You get what I'm saying? So I'm just like, so I'm like, okay, I text light skin. I'm like, well, what size do you wear? Do you wear a large, a large or a medium? He like not texting me so i'm like hello like okay like the fuck uh the moth in the clothes like i'm i'm a, i'm a running back and forth from forever 21 to h&m the uh, route 21 to this store to a boutique to the like so i'm just like okay i call a bitch you and you see me texting you because as soon as i called you you say connect me 
So I'm like, okay, what size shirt do you wear? He like, I wear a large. So I'm like, all right. So then he was like, well, I don't really think that I'm gonna do it. I don't really the day before this, you quit. I'm the day before. He like, I don't think I wanna do it. I don't think I wanna. I hung up the fucking phone. <laughs> Cause I'm just, I don't got I don't got no time. My patience is very thin now. I hang up the motherfucking phone. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm 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 like fuck it now. So I did lie to make him feel a little bad. Cause I'm like, fuck it, I didn't left them all, but I did. Cause bitch, I still had to find my motherfucking shirt. The show still gotta go motherfucking go on. Cause bitch, uh uh-uh. so he calling me, going, he like, well, okay, now I'm gonna do it since you're gonna be pissed at me. I'm like, no, you good. I'm not about to force you to do shit that you don't want to do or you don't have to fucking do because I'm not about to sit up here and be. So I'm like, I'm like, you good. So he kept calling me, kept calling me. I'm hanging, I'm literally hitting the X, like stop calling me. So then he like, well, you can't really be mad at me because I made a whole, mi-. and then he's saying this in a group chat with my friend. So he like, you can't really be mad at me because I made a whole mix and made up a whole dance for you. One, me or my friend don't even know the dance. So you made it up for you goddamn self. Two, you trying to throw what you did for me. So I was like, okay, well, how much is the mix? Because I'm going to pay you for your time. Time in all caps. Because, bitch, this is what you, you're wasting my time. So he like, no, I'm I'm not trying to be no burden. I, um, it's free or whatever. I said, baby, let me tell you. I said, this is why I don't like, this is why I don't like bitches. I mean, I don't like to ask bitches to do stuff for me. Because you going to sit up here and talk about the mix that you made for me. But you ain't going to talk about how I was going to make sure that you got drinks the whole night. How I was going to make sure that you got to race my club. And make sure you got there. Like, you ain't going to talk about that, though. Like, you just going to make it seem like, bitch, I'm just a taker and not a giver. Like, baby, this was a, a give and a give situation, you know? So um, then he was like, well, you can't be mad because I told you from jump that I didn't want to do it. I was like, well, why didn't you just stick to your first good? So I'm like, well, you can just stop texting me. I'm just done messing with you. Like, you can just stop texting me. Like, I'm good. So he uh, he like, well, I still love and support you. I still fuck with you. I said, I don't love, I don't support you. I don't fuck with you. Just stop. <laughs> like, cause you, I don't need it no more. Like I don't need it. And like the, like the little friend group that I am in, they be saying like some of the people like in the group are groupies of me, but I'm just like, if you're going to be an opportunity, learn how to take a fucking opportunity. Like you see how I say, God, I'm one of God's favorite child. I, can, I, I, I swear I am because it just all came full circle. I'm dancing right there in front of Santana. I, I'm serving his section. You get what I'm saying? My friends that came out to see me got pictures with him. They pour shots in their, in their fucking mouth. They got posted on his story. You get what I'm saying? You missed all of that because of what? You want to say your knee bad, but you would go fuck on a bad knee. That be my thing. on a bad knee. Too. When I'm a real, and that's why I be saying I don't be liking to work with people because I do turn into a bitch. You know, like Kyron, I know I was being a little bitchy because I'm like, damn, y'all got me sitting up here waiting eight minutes. You get what I'm saying? Like, bitch, I'm getting a little mad because I can I can do something with that motherfucking eight minutes. You know, like I I become a bitch because it's like I'm I'm trying to get up here. Like I don't think mm-hmm. that I'm not I ain't better than nobody, but I'm trying to get up here and I need y'all to be up here with me. You get what I'm saying? So it's like everything that I do is on my motherfucking own. It's my out, out of my own money, out of my own pocket. I don't have no machine behind me. I don't have nothing. You know, so it, it's just me. So it's like my time is fucking precious. Like I want to fill my time up to the point to where I don't have no time for, for nothing. But just me and my motherfucking businesses and me working. You know, but I always try to put somebody like on or up or whatever. That's why I will, I will come back on y'all podcast a million and one times if y'all want me to because I like it. It's a it's a vibe. You get what I'm saying? Kai, I trust you enough for me not even to know what I'm about to come on here and talk about, but I'm coming out here and talking. You get what I'm saying? So long story short, it just pissed me off or whatever. The other people in the group was trying to get him to still come. I said, I will hope the fuck not y'all don't do that because that's gonna that's gonna piss me off even more. This bitch don't get the um no. The no. no like all bets are off. You don't get to come in, you don't get to no, you don't get to do that. Like, no, because if you fucked with me, you want to quit on me the day before when I'm trying to help your motherfucking ass out. But like I said, you don't, you don't, you talking about you don't want to dance on a bad knee or everything just feeling this or feeling that, baby. Like I said, but you gonna go fuck on the bad knee. Let that sink in, y'all. 
you ain't going to dance on a bad knee. And I don't know if y'all know who FK Twigs is. And the reason I, I know this story and, and stuff, and I know FK Twigs is because of my little brother. He's obsessed with her. She had had surgery, bleeding out her stomach and everything. Two days before her surgery, I think it was Apple. She was doing something with Apple. They wanted her to do it. And guess what the fuck she went and did? She went and did it, bleeding out of her stomach and every fucking thing. She went and danced her ass off for the Apple commercial. That is fucking dedication. You get what I'm saying? Like, when I was doing my Milk Keys Mondays, it was a Monday. I had double pneumonia. I still got the fuck up and I still motherfucking recorded. I probably couldn't give it all, but I gave it a, enough. And I was super, super sick. That be my thing. I can't fuck with no bitches who don't got that driving that, that dedication. So that's why the bitch is the bum of the year. <laughs> Not just the week, the fucking year. He is sentenced pop- to prison, <laughs> maximum security, <laughs> like, with no parole. Like, so no parole. She's so not, it's she's like, not parole. that shit just, it just really pissed me off. And then he takes me like, good luck. Like, don't text me fucking good luck. Like, I, when I tell yeah. you I'm not, like, I, I already said, I put I put in my close friends, I said, I want new friends. I want people that's, you know, into fashion and into business and, and all of that. Because I don't want to talk about boys all day. It's draining. Like, no. Day. I don't want to talk about boys all day. I don't want to just. I do like to party and go out and have fun, but I work at a club, so it's like I go out every fucking night. But if I do want, if I do go out, I'm passing on my business cards. I'm making it business related. You know, the bitches that I'm going out with, they laugh at me, but they don't understand. Like, this is the grind that I'm on. Somebody gonna know who I am. I don't even give a fuck if you don't got a business at all. Bitch, you can go listen to my music. Go stream my music. Go, because one little stream, baby, that's the money. You get what I'm saying? Like, so... I just told people, like, a lot of bitches is getting scratched off the friends list, and it's going to be on the associates list, so. Period. I'm just treating bitches like I ain't never met them a day in my life. Like, hi, hello, hi, and bye, and just keeping it pushing, because <laughs> I'm focused. Like, I can't, I moved from Detroit out here to be motherfucking focused. It wasn't to make no friends. It wasn't to, it's for me to turn a fucking vision. For me I love it. Reach my end goal, so. They move out there just because. I of the fucking year story, because that bitch is a motherfucking bum. Perm. And it it's me the fuck off, like. Ugh, Dang, so who your bum of the week? <laughs> um, my bum of the week this week is Summer Walker. Um, I'm kind of tired of the whole London, you and your baby situation. Stop bringing it to us so we don't give a fuck no more. It was cute while it lasted. Um, let's go to the court. Let's put his ass on child support. He's making money off you. Let's get the money back. I'm tired <laughs> of keeping it in the blogs. I'm tired of you keep tweeting about it. Don't send her over there. You said that's why stepdads are stepdads of the year or they're real dads. Use that nigga who's leeching off you as well. So um, that. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, I was the name, though. I, I feel it. Like, um, in my group chat, somebody had sent, like, London. Like, I guess he was at the mall with no security or nothing. But I didn't even know who it was. I was like, I'm like, who is that? They started laughing, but I was dead ass. I didn't know who the picture was. I didn't know the baby. I'm like, damn, people don't know who he was, don't, like, nobody's to me. Ain't nobody worried about him or that goddamn baby. No. Yes, like, girl. <laughs> And that's my thing is too. This is my 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 bum of the my bum of the week is the baby mamas. If you fell into the trap of London, uh, baby mamas, you talking about Ebony? No, no, his baby. Mama, I said all the baby mamas. If you do this, I was actually I yeah. told my mama this the other day. I I when I seen that someone walking to about tomorrow, I said I said I'm so glad that after all the stuff that my mom, my dad, and my stepmom went through growing up, like with custody battles. Just some crazy stuff. My mama never took to Facebook, Instagram, and tried to blast my daddy or vice versa. My mama said she, but my mama was funny. My mom said, my, my mom was like, that never crossed my mind. My mom was like, I just went straight to the court <laughs> because, <laughs> but that's just like, I understand y'all frustration. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, like I said, these bitches know what the fuck they be doing. You knew who the nigga was before you sat up there and laid the fuck down with him. Mm-hmm. Hey. 
And like I said, I understand why y'all be mad, but y'all be knowing a lot of times, but y'all be ignoring them red flags until it until it's too damn late and you got a little carnita in your belly and you about to pop out a bubble guppy. And you want to talk about how he not being a good dad and doing this and this doing that, blah, blah. And don't come and she, you know, you got all this. I'm, like go to the front of the court, take all that stuff that you like. Summer should have took them text messages, that screenshot to the front of sure. the court. And yeah, then sure. that's when the real reconciliation would happen. But instead mm-hmm. you took to Al Gore's internet and trying to blast London on track. That man don't give, and that's another thing. These men don't give a damn when y'all blast them on the internet. They don't. They don't. Like, what are they we going to do? Care. The fans, what are we going to do? Literally, what are we going to do? Go, go in his comment section and say, fuck you, you deadbeat. Oh, well, he can just delete and block us. Next. Turn his phone off. Delete the app. Like, what, like, like for real, for like, what are we going to do? Go to the front of the court. How about you do that? You take that to judge and them, and then let them handle it and let them get all of that stuff taken care of. That's why I was just like, when she had all them, tr- but my thing is like, and a lot of times they be posting screenshots, evidence. I'll be like, but did you take this to the judge? Like, this is literally your evidence for your case. You could have started the whole case, got the money that you needed, got the protection order for your child, the custody order, whatever you needed to get. You could have did that, but instead you waited on Instagram the same amount of time you waited to you read you you uploaded those that evidence and wrote that capture, you could have called the front of the court and let them know the stuff before a day and the damn time to go meet with a lawyer to get what you need to get done. So it's just mm-hmm. like our priorities are so messed up. It's just like we and we do everything for the ground. We gonna we gonna do it for the ground. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my bum of the week. The, the baby mamas, if you fell in that category. Okay. Don't don't get on don't get on here blasting these men because they don't care. They really don't care. They don't. And y'all, was, mm-hmm. y'all be looking too because y'all know who y'all knew what the nigga was. Like and that's I, I used to call him I used to always call him, me and well my friends would be trying to do that. And I swipe up like bitch, delete that. Like what what are you getting out of that? Thank like, you. Ooh, you a real one. My friend, she put on Facebook like, oh, when he doesn't take showers and I said, bitch, you got you you had a baby with him. Right. The first shower that he didn't take, Miss, you should have known that that wasn't what you wanted to do. But you wanted to be loved so bad and felt loved so bad and wanted to swear you had a nigga so bad. Now look at you, bitch, with a damn baby and a nigga that ain't taking no showers. I'm like, everybody gonna be laughing at your motherfucking ass now. They be incriminating themselves, like just be telling they own this. Like, this nigga got this, bitch, you got it too now. Exactly. So, be, be on it, baby mama's boss up on the nigga. Like, who gives a f- I was a my single mama. My dad was there a little bit of my motherfucking life. Don't get me wrong, but when shit hit the fan, I always call my motherfucking mama. Mm-hmm. My dad don't I ain't talked to my dad in two years. You don't know shit on what I got going on in my goddamn life. Nothing at all. So, like, this boss up on the baby daddy is like, who gives a fuck? I get it. Y'all be hurt. Y'all be mad. But y'all can't be bitter for that long. And then, too, y'all pass that same resentment down to y'all children because y'all too busy paying this man and his stuff attention. You not pouring in love and the care and the need that you need into your child. Okay. They don't be getting they that either. They don't grow up and look at this shit on the internet. They That's what they don't get. These celebrities, they don't think that these kids going to grow up and look at this shit. That's why Kim, she don't want her daughter going live and talking to the fans and shit because that y'all know that these people going to tell y'all kids the type fools that y'all is. Okay, literally. So, yeah. That concludes our show, y'all. So thank you, Milky, for coming on. I can't wait because you said you come on here a million one time. Yes, so, I would love to come back. Like this is we, my first. I think y'all try. You know, wait, let me, um, this is my second interview, but this is my first podcast interview. So okay, y'all so pop, pop, pop your podcast. <laughs> <Cherry. laughs> um, I loved it. Thank y'all for having me. Um. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for reaching out to me. And I just want y'all to keep growing and doing y'all. And um, I just want to tell y'all consistency is the key. So just keep on consistently doing it. Even though I know sometimes numbers be high, sometimes numbers be low. Still do it. Because one number is better than fucking zero. Mm -hmm. Period. So with that being said, I'm that's Kyron. And I am that boy Day. Milky, <laughs> and I holla.
Ah, uh, hello. Sim, ó. Uh, not in the meeting. We, because we got some stuff to talk about. 